I find myself today having time and energy to film, but not time and energy to prepare a video and film. So what are we doing today? A totally unscripted video. We're going to be talking about Eugenie by Jess Franco. Or if you want to say it the American way, Eugenie. The story of her journey into perversion. So Brian sent this Blue Underground DVD to me and I have finally watched it. I watched it last night and today I've decided I want to talk about it. So this video uh, might be kind of like scattered, rambly all over the place, or you could just call it conversational because like I said, I haven't prepared a written script for this video, but I am going to talk about spoilers because we need to talk about some spoilers. I would say that that wouldn't take away from your viewing experience if you watch it after watching this video, but I am going to tell you the end and that's the part that's a little unfortunate to spoil. So just proceed with caution. So this movie is heavily inspired by Marquis de Sade and it's also an adaptation of something he wrote, a book called Philosophy in the Bedroom from 1795. I have not read de Sade so just keep that in mind um, while watching this review. Okay so this movie is about <laughs> this girl I guess, okay, she's like 19, I think, at the time of filming this. And I don't know how old her character was in intended to be because they never said. But she lives with her parents. And I think this like this is like a wealthy family. And her dad basically rents his daughter out to this couple for the weekend. It's pretty messed up. But we start off like seeing her in her bedroom. And she asked, I, I think they're trying to emphasize her youth because they have she has this like little toddler bed that has like baby dolls on it and stuff and it's just like I'm like how old is this girl supposed to be <laughs> so you kind of start off a little apprehensive but she is a young woman Eugenie and she has made friends with this woman I guess at uh, parties or something like that so this woman is who she goes to see on the private island for the weekend. In true orgasmo fashion, the woman is there with her brother and you can tell they are involved. But then it's revealed, oh, it's just the stepbrother. So it's fine, right? So in short, Eugenie has kind of been lured here without knowing exactly what's gonna be going on. It's a little unclear how much she knows is gonna be happening, but as, Another character said she has basically been brought there as a plaything. So there's a lot of sexual encounters going on. Eventually, it is revealed that this brother and sister are part of a cult. <laughs> but it, they don't worship Satan, okay? They worship Marquis de Sade. And they also like to dress like him. It's weird. It's like this cosplay cult of some kind. And as funny as that sounds, they still participate in human sacrifice. So apparently the plan for Eugenie is they're gonna like, you know, take her innocence a little bit and then she will be sacrificed by this cult at the end of the weekend. The cult, by the way, is led by Christopher Lee. So yeah, Christopher Lee is in this movie, which is part of why it was appealing to me, but his part is like, kind of pointless, like he doesn't really do anything. I mean, he's there and he looks cool and everything, but like, he's just there. Let's take a little detour and talk about um, some of the qualities of this film. And first and foremost, this soundtrack is incredible. I've listened to it three times today. I don't do that, okay? But I've been listening to it on repeat. It's just like, it is so incredible. Bruno Nicolai. I don't know what it is, but this is like, this one's right out there. My favorite like Euro soundtrack is in Terabang. But Eugenie is right up there with it. They're like neck and neck, man. It is, oh, it is so good. And visually, I did see some reviews that were talking about how like out of focus it is a lot. Although I, I think it's intentional because it has to do with like wavering consciousness. Visually, it's really pretty. Uh, the setting is, seaside villa it's really beautiful 
Um, the lighting, I feel like they did something here. Almost looks like day for night. The shadows are really, really dark. And the there's like some weird kind of contrast between the light and the shadow that makes it look like there's some sort of filter on it or something. But it's pretty, I guess it adds this like darkness to the movie. And the camera also has this like floating around kind of feel to it because they're like doing a lot of dollying and panning around. And yeah, I'm happy with the way it's shot. I think it's really pretty. Oh yeah, and let's talk about these characters. We have a um, st stepsister, this blonde lady. I don't like her. And then we have her set brother. I know I've seen him in something. I think he does his part really well because he's freaking creepy. But I mean, he's off-putting. Christopher Lee, like I said, he doesn't really do anything, but he's got the whole like evil overlord character going on like he usually does. And he does it well. And let's talk about Eugenie. <laughs> she's an angel. I love her. Oh my gosh. She's so great. She's beautiful. She just she does so good. She's just so good. And I was really sad. I read a little bit about her and I was sad to see that she kind of like quit acting pretty early on. But I do want to seek out other movies she has been in because I'm pretty sure this is the only movie of hers that I have seen. The sequence of events in this film, Eugenie, Eugenie gets to the villa and they're just visiting, you know, and very quickly we get this like sexual encounter between stepsister, God, I should know her name, stepsister and Huge. And that was all fun, all fun and games, lighthearted, you know, that was good. But beyond that, every other encounter has was malicious. It was evil stuff, you know, drugging her taking advantage of her, that kind of thing. You know this hoe doesn't like that kind of stuff necessarily, but I will say it, it, it wasn't this like graphic, graphically explicit attack, you know? So I could go with it. And we'll get, we'll get to why this works, okay? We'll get to why this works in a bit. So it does go from like a fun encounter to the encounters being a bit more deceitful dark and grim. The tone of the film overall, it's like, there's a lot of ick. Oh yeah, I did mention in my review that it reminded me a little bit of Orgasmo, reminded me a little bit of The Eye of the Hurricane. As the film progresses, we move into this sexual activity that is violent, like whips and chains and stuff like that. Plenty of gaslighting too, by the way. But as the cult comes to the island, you learn a little bit more about like how they cherish and they see merit in torture and pain and cruelty, all like the sod kind of stuff, which is pretty interesting, a pretty interesting theme. I just find it a little bit hard to watch when it's like sexual in nature and being inflicted upon someone who's innocent. But there was this aspect to it of like initiation or a rite of passage. And I am fascinated with those concepts and the fact that in Western society, we oftentimes don't have rites of passage anymore. So in a way it was transformative because at the end, and this is where I'm gonna be talking about the end, the tables turn and Eugenie basically ends up killing the stepbrother and stepsister. And she kind of has to like, so it's not really like a rape revenge story, but she has to kill them in the, like in the moment to survive. It's like a split second decision. And it very much has like final girl vibes, especially after she kills them both and the cult leaves and she's just like running around on the beach. Um, it kind of reminds me of any given final girl moment where she like, makes it out of the cave or makes it out of the house and it, or the rain is pouring down and she's just running and like, it's that feeling, but I really love that moment. And yeah, so in a way we did see this initiation that transformed her. And at the end, she did end up like taking control and making her own choices. And she did transform into someone that can advocate for herself. And it's just like a badass, you know what I mean? So as I watched this movie, the beginning where I'm trying to like suss it out morally, you know, um, 
and they're making her look like a child. I was like, ooh, ooh. And then we get to the arrival at the seaside villa and I'm like, hmm, okay, this is going okay. And then things turn dark and then I'm like, ugh. And then we get to that triumphant ending and I'm like, oh, oh. And I think the ending is what really like kind of wrapped this up into something that is understandable. The ending it definitely kind of won me over. And as the film came to a close and I like stepped away and I was thinking about it for a while, I realized that it's not just it's not just a sexy shocker film. There's a lot more you can take away from this. It's not necessarily just like objectifying and exploiting a young girl. I think it mirrors a lot of what you see in real life. Let me explain what I mean here. So any person, especially a woman, so we'll just say women, a woman who is reaching this age of becoming a sexual person. There's always gonna be other people kind of dictating how your journey goes, okay? Your journey into adulthood. There'll be people telling you like, this is how you do it, this is what you do, this is what you should do, this is what you should look like, this is how you should act, this is how it's gonna go. There's always gonna be someone else helping to dictate your journey. So yes, I definitely look at this as a coming of age story. Young women are often just like cast into the world of sex before they really quite know what's going on. Okay. But what is a proper introduction into becoming an adult? I don't know. So yeah, she is becoming a woman regardless of how she, whether she wants to or not. And she does have like a wide range of reactions to the encounters. Like at one point she said it was terrible and cruel but also wonderful like she said something like that but yeah a lot of people's path into uh sexuality nobody's path is like straightforward and perfect you know what i mean along the way people may encounter manipulation deception risks mistakes being taken advantage of just being generally awkward people making decisions for you or just getting plunged into the world before you are fully understanding. And you can really see this represented in Eugenie's story. So I think it is a really uh, symbolic sort of depiction of the larger story of young people who are coming of age. And even though, yeah, the road might be really bumpy or really messed up, I like to think that most people kind of like find their way. And I like to think that huge came out okay too. The film does kind of leave me wondering, like I often do, why a young woman's innocence is commodified and why the world tends to idealize a woman just on that age, like just on that brink of legal age. So initially I was thinking to myself, like this film would be more fun if huge was fully consenting. Like if you knew what she was getting into, I was like all about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I always, I keep thinking about The Virgin Witch, another movie which Brian sent me. And in that situation, she was a young woman coming of age. She was like all in, like she knew what she was gonna do and she was all about it. But I feel like Eug Eugenie um, didn't quite know fully. Maybe I'm wrong, you know, this could be, interpreted a few ways but I do now like to interpret it as a representation of a woman's coming of age and how there's always going to be other voices dictating that path into sexuality and it is quite possible that I might have received that film way differently if the soundtrack wasn't so perfect. I love the soundtrack and I feel like that is maybe 50% of what really gripped me about this film. <laughs> but also I freaking love this woman who played Eugenie and I do like this coming of age aspect ultimately. So I like this film, I am keeping it, I am revisiting it and yeah, it has left an imprint on me. 
So you guys let me know if you have seen Eugenie and what your thoughts are. I know it's kind of like a controversial, it's kind of a controversial thing. So you guys let me know if you have seen Eugenie and what your, like, what your interpretation is. Do you think I'm like way off with the way I'm translating this film? You let her know down below. Hopefully this unscripted review went okay. And I'll see you in the next video.